Alrighty. Welcome back to another episode of the Unbound Book Babes. Today, we are going to be talking about what we have read and or listened to in Q1 of 2024. I know that we're four months into this year, but it still sounds wild to say 2024 to me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I don't know. Wild. I don't... It, that's because 2011 was like a week ago. Mm -hmm. Yes. I... <laughs> trip out a lot about the date and saying the date. it just i always take a pause and i'm like wow it's the middle of april of the year of 2024 interesting just yes and I, for me it's my i turn 30 this year year so <laughs> i'm like this is a weird year man <laughs> yes 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 the dirty 30s I'm excited for it. I'm like yeah. pumped for, for what's to come. So that's good. It's the right mindset to be in. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. So first three months of the year, how's your uh, reading journey looking, Bobby? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about this because I didn't really prep for this episode, but we, we wanted to do this idea and I kind of felt like just doing it off the cuff because that's how I feel about my reading. Like everything is off the cuff. <laughs> so what I've realized, Kristen, is that I'm a mood reader and I had no idea. Like I know I was like a go in blind kind of girl. Like I just got, I just started reading Witcher, going in totally blind, didn't know nothing about that book at all. I know there's a TV show about it, know nothing. And so I thought I was, but no, I'm a mood reader. So I need to be in the mood for certain things. And so if I have like a super strict TBR, I get like, I just don't want to read. Like I just avoid reading. <laughs> so yeah. That's how my reading is going. That. I feel you. As soon as it's on my TBR, I'm like, I no longer want to read that. Scrolling through, randomly finding a book, I want to read that. <laughs> yep. You are going to be so proud of me. Um, I know that I spent the last however many episodes we've done um, raving, ranting, and raving, and hating audiobooks. But I've cranked out some audiobooks this year. I know. You, you like sent me like, I can't, I can't remember. You sent me a text message about an audio, about an author. And you're like, I'm obsessed with this author right now. I've listened to like. Frida, Frida McFadden. Yeah. Yes. And so you sent me that text and you're like, I listened to like three of her books. And I was like, <laughs> the only word I actually read was listened. I was like, oh. <laughs> Okay, and then I asked you the question, how are you getting all of these audiobooks? Because that's part of my reading journey right now is I'm actually struggling to get books. And we can talk about that in a little bit, but because I do want to get to what we've actually read. But um, I also want to touch on that because it's been so difficult. Yeah. Um, Audible, unfortunately. Um, I signed up for that like little $15 membership, and I think I have purchased more of these than I'd like to admit. <laughs> um, so not stoked about that particular part of my journey. Um, but yes, Audible, Spotify, uh, and Libby. Libby always has such a long wait, though. You know, you're, it's weeks, and then you're I like, I got a oh, story man. about that, too, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I have the story <laughs> this week. Yeah. But, yeah. And then I gotta take notes um, so I remember these, to tell these stories. <laughs> <laughs> several of these I ended up like I'll just you know, I'll just get into it. Um the You Shouldn't Have Come Here. I should have looked up the author before I started this, but You Shouldn't Have Come Here was a book that I just don't know why I wanted to read it so bad, but I got the I had to wait several weeks to get the readable version, the ebook, mm. and then I couldn't get into it. And then uh, several weeks later, I got the audiobook, and it, it was a really slow start. But oh my god, the plot twist! Halfway, like sixty percent of the way through the book, 
I don't even want to say anything else about the book because I'm the queen of spoilers, but the like just go get the audiobook. You shouldn't have come here. Let me look up who it's by. <laughs> I was gonna Google it for us. Uh by Geneva Rose. Geneva Rose. Geneva Geneva. Geneva. The cover Probably. is a cover that I would avoid. <laughs> Really? Oh yeah, I'm a judge. Of, yeah, I just I uh, Geneva Rose is the queen of twists. Colleen Hoover. That's on the cover for one. Um, but then here, let me just show you guys what it looks like. So this is the cover. Let me. Can I zoom out? Yes. Oop, that's in. Yeah. So um, that is the cover I would avoid because it looks like a. Uh, A scary. <laughs> it looks like a scary. <laughs> you know, oh, man, I, again, I just don't want to say anything because she is. She's the queen of plot twists. My only complaint about this book is her overuse of the meta, is it a metaphor? That she was like driving through the forest and she said the road snaked through the forest like a snake or the black road looked like a snake. But she used that, like, eight times. Right? So, like, the first time, you're like, wow. You're right. That's conjure It conjures such an image. Mm -hmm. And then after, like, the eighth time, you're like, okay, we get it. Like, does the road look like anything besides a snake? Because you might be driving on a snake. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. I mean, fair enough. <laughs> that was my only complaint about it. But my god! And the plot twist, it didn't end. It didn't end until she stopped writing. Like, by the time you get to the end of the book and things are wrapping up, like, sentence after sentence after sentence, you're like, whoa, 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 whoa! <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm gonna have to uh, read that one then. Yeah, that was, again, um, a slow start. You gotta get, like, 50% of the way into it. Before it gets interesting. <laughs> Gonna just throw it on my list somewhere. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Her and Frida McFadden. Great plot twist. Slow starts. Force yourself through the first 50% of the book. And then it gets really good. The, the plot twists are worth it at the end for the slow starts. Okay. That's great. Yeah. So how are we doing the list? How are we like... Are we going back and forth? Are you going to... Go through uh, a month at a time. Did you have any order? <laughs> I just. Oh, Bobby, you know I didn't have any order. I know. I think, that's I I think it's just absolutely wonderful that you're like, I have a spreadsheet, and I'm like, I just wrote down from memory. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that tells you anything about <laughs> this show. <laughs> that's all you need to know, <laughs> right there. It truly, it truly is all you need to know that I. Chaos. <laughs> so how about this? We'll go through your January, and then I'll throw in some books, and then we'll go through your February, and I'll throw in some books. <laughs> I think I already talked about Psycho... I think I've already talked about January. Psycho January? <laughs> Psycho Gods. <laughs> oh, yes. <I'm> sorry. <laughs> My whole brain just stopped working in full, <laughs> complete sentences. No, because I, I think I've talked about Psycho Gods, uh, Gothicana, Light Lark, um, Come for Cupid, uh, CC1 and CC2. That's what I read in January, which is, like, incredible because that's a lot of stuff to read. But, but I think I touched on that in a previous episode. I'll check, and if I did, I'll link it up there because I probably talked about them in much more detail. Um, but February was so slow. I read two books. Well, read two books and listened to one. So I, uh, My Sister the Serial Killer, I read that one. That one's good. Um, you know, I, I reflect on it. It, it. it triggers some PTSD for me in the process, so, like, my review mm -hmm. around it. But I need to go back and, like, update my review because, like, the more I've processed it, it's such a good book. It's a very good book. The author does an incredible job. She's a poet, so it's kind of whimsically and poet, but it's, like, pretty freaking heavy topics, because, like, I mean the title, right? And um, 
So I would recommend it. It's not a very hard read and it's not a very big book. It's kind of a, it's an interesting refresher. I also read CC3, which I'll just link the episode where we talk about that one because we talked about <laughs> that one. So it was a live. I'll link the live. Ad nauseum. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then Broken Blade. I listened to that and I love this series. Actually, I just bought the books. That's what oh, I should have put over here. I didn't do anything with this, this today. But so <laughs> Broken Blade. And I also just finished listening to Shadow, a Shadow Crown book two recently. The book is about a woman who is um, essentially an assassin. But I want you not to worry because this is <laughs> nothing like SJM. This is nothing like a throne of glass. And when I say that, that is because um, the world is so much more unique. Um, in my opinion, the world that she... So A Broken Blade for me was four stars. And honestly, it was probably like a 3.8. But it was intriguing enough to continue because the world was so unique. And you learn a lot more about the world and she builds the world a lot more clearly in the second book and that book was second book five stars and i just i went out and i physically bought the copies of these because i listened to both of them on hoopla i went out and then the third book is out and i bought that in the set and these books are beautiful i'm gonna grab them hold on guys they're so heavy books are so heavy <laughs> <laughs> Um, this is the first one. I don't know if you'll be able to see oh, You can see it, you guys. Oh. Isn't it so just like... Oh my god, I love the eyes. And I'm telling you, it it's a metallic reflect just as you can see it so well on this camera. I tried to do it with my phone <laughs> and you could not see it as well, but I guess I also have a light in front of it with this. I did it with my phone. This is book number two. Look at that freaking her blade, the red. It's crazy. And then wow. Amazing. this is the third one. I love how purple this is. It's so beautiful. <laughs> oh yeah, that's the one you sent me a picture of. Yes. Yo, it's so good. I'm so excited to start reading this, you guys. I cannot wait. But they are beautiful. Super, super yes. beautiful. And the spines are pretty okay in matching. Matching. That's all that matters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is that a completed series? I don't know still... if book three is the last one. It's called... The series is called The Halfling Saga by Melissa Blair. And I think she got popular because of TikTok. Um, I don't actually know. I just love the books. Like, like, but like I said, the first book is a little meh, but it leaves you interested. I think it, it, I mean, at least it left me interested enough to continue to the second one. I also had this recommendation from Paige and she told, she kind of warned me about that. So I went in, I guess I didn't go in fully blind. I went in knowing that like it gets, and she was absolutely correct. And, and I, so it seems common between me and my friends. So maybe it's a theme for that book <laughs> but yeah very cool yeah i'm excited to own them and jake's like you already listened to two of them why did you need to buy them i'm like look <laughs> look at them look at they're shiny <laughs> shiny bobbles <laughs> <laughs> the true definition of a book dragon <laughs> reading books and buying books are two totally different hobbies Indeed, that is. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Don't have a lot of books that I read thus far. Really? So obviously, CC two and CC three. Skip right over those. Um, <laughs> so there was this, a series. It was a trilogy. It started with um, "You Can Follow Me." I think you can follow me, and then it goes into "Lose Me in the Shadows." And then the third one, the third and final one that I was super excited for, 
um, Meet Me in the Dark by Joe Brenner uh, came out in January. Um, and I am so bummed, man. The series just went downhill. Oh, no. First one. The first one was so good. I couldn't put it down. Couldn't stop thinking about it. I believe I reread it. And then the second one, I was like, meh, you know, maybe the third one. And then the third one just. Oh, no. And it was a real bummer. Was it the last one, though? Is it like she's calling it? Yeah. Good. Okay. It. Yeah. Maybe it was just a natural progression for that one. And it she made the right choice in ending it there. Yeah, I think the right choice would have been to just leave the first one as a standalone, like, mm -hmm. my way to wrap it up. But, yeah. Um, yeah, that was a real bummer. That was a real bummer. Um, and then I read, uh, speaking of poetry, The Teacher by Frida McFadden. Um, she does, uh, the teacher is an English teacher, and then his favorite, his quote-unquote favorite student is um, all into poetry and Edgar Allan Poe and all of that stuff. And um, I'm sure for somebody that was into poetry, this book would have been super interesting that loved to like... Again, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Easter eggs are not for me. So, I mean, I got the references to like the Raven and stuff. Um, but I'm sure there's so many references just right over my head because... I am not a poetry person. <laughs> you know what? That made me think of a movie that I heard of recently. Let me... What the hell's her name? Jenna Ortega. She was just recently in the movie Miller's Girl. And it is about a student-teacher relationship. And I, it was based around books, yeah. So that's exactly what that made me think of. <laughs> <laughs> it's got 5.2 stars out of 10 on IMBD. <sighs> Jenna Ortega is a very interesting actress, though. Can you put up a picture of her? The name sounds familiar, but I can't picture her face. She uh, is Wednesday. Uh from, hold on, I don't know how to use IMVD. Uh, let me go back. Oh, and that's the guy from The Hobbit? He's in a lot of stuff, but. Go back to Jenna Ortega. There you go. Yeah, and she's in the new Beetlejuice. I'm very excited for the new Beetlejuice. I'm very, very excited. Yeah, Aspen is a huge fan. And so she's pumped. <laughs> Aspen's my little sister, y'all. <laughs> but anyways. I I did the teacher movies because I was like, is this, <laughs> what is it called? I could not think of what it was called. <laughs> Google is going to be like, my Google search history is probably <laughs> interesting. Google's, Google's like the goat though, right? Because you're like, I just have this random thought. <laughs> Truly. <laughs> return a movie. Return a book title. <laughs> Truly. Paige and I had that conversation the other day, too. But, um... So that's another one by Freedom McFadden, right? So how many did you read by her? Yeah. Okay, let me count. Um, okay, but the teacher, meh, it wasn't that great. Okay. Um, although, I keep saying that about all of her books. Remember when I was like, I read The Housemaid? And you're like, I've heard great things. And I was like, meh. And then I went on to listen to the whole series. So we have one, two, three, four... Five. Five. <laughs> the progression of your counting was the funniest thing. You're like, what? Two? Three? More? Two more? I read, I read two and I listened to three. And I gotta say, if you are just getting into uh, Freedom McFadden or those types of books, never lie. Ooh. It's about a, a psychologist. mm um, and she has, and her clients. Hmm. It's a good one. It's a doozy. That was one that I was like, don't talk to me. I'm busy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, don't talk to me. I'm busy. <laughs> yeah. That one was like, I got to go just drive around in circles. Cause... <laughs> <laughs> I can't stop. <laughs> yeah. So March was a huge, Ooh. what? I was going to ask if you had any DNRs so far this year. <gasps> I do have one. Yes. I did it yes. this month. 
<laughs> we talked about this. It's either <laughs> or. <laughs> it's either or. <laughs> Both apply. <laughs> yep, multiply. So I did, and it was actually my wild pick for my physical TBR. If you want to see more content like this, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and click the bell to be notified every time we upload. It really helps us out. And I picked another one. Ooh. Yeah, so it's called The Beginner's Guide to Free Fall. Um, and it was a book that I sounded interesting um, that I got from like the free book days or whatever. Mm. And um, I read the first chapter, which is three pages. <laughs> and I said, I don't know if this one's for me, y'all. It's about yeah. an engineer who there's an accident at work and then his his marriage falls apart because something from his past comes back to haunt him. I'm like, is this like a man's story about cheating and making a poor decision in a process at work and his life falls apart and it's well me? <laughs> And, and then, like, his sister's going through some shit, so you get this parallel. I assume you get this parallel view. And I just, it just wasn't speaking to me. Again, this is where I learned I'm a mood reader. <laughs> I just was not speaking to me right now. So I put it down. And I honestly, I don't have the space for it in my TBR, so it is going to be donated. Yeah. Good call. Good call. So, yep. But I read a lot of stuff in the month of March. It was, it was a busy month? It was a busy month. I did my wild pick, which was uh, the soulmate equation. And mm -hmm. then I finished um, Blood of Ancients, which is in my Vampire Huntress series that I'm obsessed with. And then Dead Letter Delivery from cj archer, archer. Mm -hmm. yep it came out mm -hmm. <laughs> it came out in march <laughs> and i read it it was the first book i think i read in march actually because i stopped everything to read it per usual <laughs> per usual and then i read i'm glad my mom died by jeanette mccurdy i read her her story um Ooh. Yeah, I read it actually because and I went, we were off for some of March, right, which allowed me some extra time to read, I guess. But um, <laughs> I also went on a, a long vacation and I actually read that the week before because I was the day after getting there, I was joining my two girlfriends at their book club and that's the book that they chose. And it was the cutest book club. Ryan made us food. It was <laughs> so good. Um, and then we just were chatting about a bunch of things and then we briefly talked about the book, you know, um, as book clubs go, but, um, we are all so shocked by so, so much of her story. So it's pretty incredible. Um, and as you know, the Nickelodeon situation is extremely popular in media right now. Um, and honestly, she was the first one to, in my thought, the whole thing with her and her coming out beforehand, and then this documentary comes out and stuff, I kind of find it, um, comical. Because I'm like, it's like, yeah, Jeanette threw you all under the fucking bus. So now you have to explain what the fuck happened. Dumbass. Amanda Bynes came out years ago. Oh, a I know. Over That's ago. true. She was the first one. That's true. She, I don't know why I didn't think of her. Because I, I actually see a lot of stuff about her on Snapchat. It's all my It's actually eyes. really, you know, I mean, okay. Let me, how do I want to preface this? Um... I'm uneducated. Everything from here on out is my opinion. I don't know these people. I don't have any insider knowledge. I'm just a silly little girl on the internet saying silly little things. Um, I am shocked that people are shocked by what's coming out in Hollywood. I thought we all knew that it was just a de like a city of depravity and vapid personalities. Mm -hmm. um, people have been saying for a for decades that there's just terrible terrible stuff going on there and then when children become adults and speak up people are like oh, i'm i'm aghast and you're like but 20 years ago somebody said something in the 90s people were saying stuff mm -hmm. and nobody has said hey let's boycott nickelodeon hey maybe children shouldn't be actors maybe their parents should stop like pimping them out like nobody they all went oh that's so terrible and then nobody cared after that Nobody has thought about, like, hey, maybe there should be a little change in the industry. Like, 
Okay, I don't know if you've ever watched uh, Hannah Montana. Mm-hmm. Um, with M- Miley Cyrus and Billy Ray Cyrus. And Billy Ray Cyrus ended up marrying one of the girls that was on the show that is Miley Cyrus's age. That he worked with on that show 10, 15 years ago. Yep. Like, it is disgusting. And I'm shocked that other people are shocked. That it's like... <sighs> you know you really what thought, I am? Like, I am not shocked. I like <laughs> not shocked at all. Yeah. About like like obviously children actors come out so messed up. Clearly some trauma there. Mm-hmm. Yep. Anyways. Thanks for letting me rant about that. Yeah. I'm just, <laughs> I just continue to see people that are like, Oh my god, I'm so shocked. And you're like, Really? You're, you're shocked. You do not have a the correct. You take your rose color colored glasses off and look at the real world, please. Yeah, it's it's yeah. Um, how is your progress going this month? How are you feeling about reading this month? Um, what are we in April? You know, it's been off to a slow start. Uh, traveling for work and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I currently have a book that is i have been fighting with this book all year um it's called hawk it's like a romance novel i'm thinking it's gonna be a dnr i'm thinking i'm just gonna move on from it but it's just it's the one of the very first cheating tropes that i've ever read i don't like those why don't you like them before i rant again um (laughs) i just don't like cheating yeah i just avoid the one that imagery in my life the ones that i've read or i haven't read a lot there's been a couple but this is the first one that i'm like oh wait i caught on super early this is going to be a cheating trope um there's no nuance to it there's no like yeah nuance because all they do is create a villain in the spouse or the loved one that's getting cheated on, right? They just villainize that person and then they're like, see? See why it's fine that I cheated with this other person? And you're like, so boring, so black and white. Nuance. I want people to like, I, as the reader, I want to be like, who should you pick, man? Like, I want to be more invested in every character that you bring into the book. But when you just villainize the original spouse and now it's like justified that you're cheating, so boring. Count me out. Nuance. Mm. I want nuance in my stories, especially if you're going to hit such a controversial topic, right? Mm. Make it more interesting. Make it more nuanced. Make me make me hate the main character, not the spouse. You know what I mean? But also the audiobook's like 20 hours long and unnecessary. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That seems like way. That's a long. <laughs> that's a long book. It's unnecessary. Wow. Or maybe it's twenty hours because I keep losing interest and then having to like back, 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 back. Probably. Back, 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 back. <laughs> yeah. Get rid of that. I just think like it's so boring. Like okay, you villainized. You villainized her boyfriend. Mm-hmm. Now, I, now I'm like. But then you're like, okay, you villainized him. Just break up with him and move on. Oh, mm. that's right. She doesn't have a job, and he's a good guy, and he's a Christian. And, ugh, it's so dumb. So many red flags in that that, that comment. <laughs> <laughs> good guy. Good <laughs> Christian. I'm kidding. Oh, I'm no. kidding. I want, more, I want more nuance. Just from your typical, wanna... that's like your, like, like, is that your red, your bookish red flag? It's like a good guy and Christian? Because everything else you've talked about. <laughs> <laughs> that's not what she wants boring. in real life, Next. but <laughs> this is too simple for her imaginary world. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I did, I DNR the uh beginner's guide to free fall <laughs> and um this month because that was like the first book i cracked open and i was like no oh, thank you and then i got um on mass the the arc from lauren and 
I already finished that. It's so good. It might be, I don't know. I really liked it. It, and I think she did a very good job in how she placed it in the storyline, coming out with that first and placing it where she did in the series because it's like two and a half. So, um, and the ending is brutal and it align, it ends up aligning a timeline and I cried. I was like, I don't, I need the next book. What happens next? There's no more pages. <laughs> so, uh, and it might seem, it might seem shocking that Bobby cried. <laughs> um, but Lauren M. <laughs> she will make you cry. Yes. Um, check out our little interview with her. Uh, <laughs> she's going to hurt your feelings. We don't, we didn't cry in the interview. We really held it together. We did a great job not crying. I cried. <laughs> I did. Like, I <laughs> I was not good. I I had to out myself. <laughs> I could no okay, longer well, read my screen. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, check out that interview and then go check out She's Got the Sin of Saints, The Bones of Benevolence, and now Unmasked is on April 24th. Yep, and The War of Wings is coming soon. So go catch up. You got a lot to read. It's good. Not you, Bobby. You, listener. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you have read those books, leave a comment down below and tell us uh, how you felt about them. And now I'm reading The Witcher, which leads me into my conversation about my reading problems of trying to get books <laughs> this month. Because when I tell you that I swear I struggled for two weeks to even get a download on Hoopla for, at, like... The things that I wanted to be reading, I could not. Mm -hmm. I finally, I woke up at 5 a.m. And the first thing I did was grab my phone and went to my favorites on Hoopla and panic borrowed three books. Because <laughs> I was like, I have like all of this reading to do. And I, I know I have some travel time and some of it's driving. So I needed, so I was like calculating hours of books and like, so, like to try it because I like, because what I was doing is I was going around like nine o'clock in the morning when I'm sitting drinking my coffee and doing emails. I looked and I was like, oh, I'll borrow a book real quick. Nope. It was like your daily allotted <laughs> borrows for your library are up. And if you want to know more about what I'm talking about, we did an episode on this a couple weeks ago. So um, check out our library and the cost of the true cost of digital reading. Um, but... Yeah, I I cannot even express to you how frustrating it's been. So I finally went on Libby and I and, I, and so like this has been a problem for like 2 to 3 weeks like I said. So I went on Libby and I like searched for what they have on there and I saw The Witcher and this is a topic that we're going to do an episode on so we're going to read the first two books and then we're going to watch the series and we're going to chat about it. Um cuz I already have so many thoughts you guys. <laughs> and so anyways, I the Witcher audiobook, 26 weeks. 26 week wait time on Libby. Pretty much next year. Yeah. And then the ebook, um, which this is the first ebook that I've gotten on Libby and sent to my Kindle, by the way. Like, I didn't even know how to do it. I was just like, oh, it's figured out. <laughs> like, um, but yeah, so finally got the ebook, started it. Friday night, I think, um, to last night. I don't know what day it is, guys. So maybe Thursday night I started it. But um, I'm a little confused. That's all I'm going to say for now. You'll have to wait for the Witcher episode for more. But uh, yeah, so this is this has been... And then Libby, it's just the long wait times. I don't know. I In Hoopla, I'm not being able to borrow. And I'm like, how do I donate money? To my local library to get more digital copies out there in the world like oh my god um anyways yeah so this has been my reading and it doesn't it's starting to feel good again for a hot minute there it wasn't feeling great and now i'm like okay we're on a we're on the right path of interest for your mood right now so thank god oh i also listened to a book my fake fiance i just finished that one the other day on Hoopla. I did not add that to a list. Um, it was just a cute 
It was one of the ones I panic borrowed because I was like, I kind of just want, I had a six hour drive and I was like, between two days. And I was like, I need something that's short, cute, and will hold my interest, you know. And so I, you know, that was one of the ones I panic borrowed. And it was, ended up being book eight in a series about this whole family. (laughs) And I was like, well, we're jumping in at the end. Because it's one of those series where, like, you can pick up any of the books, but they're just going to reference different people from other books. Anyways, it was fine. We just powered... I was kind of... I don't like to do that. I don't like to start a book. I want to start at the beginning. And so I was like, this is our option because there's no more borrows left. (laughs) Like, you can't borrow anything. But it ended up being pretty adorable. I'm adding it to my uh, spreadsheet, you guys. Let me just do that really quick. Sorry. That's why you hear my computer. <laughs> so. But I have... You know what I didn't talk about? What? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. Go, go, go. Um, the audiobook that got me started on my audiobook journey. Butcher and Blackbird. Oh. Yeah. Yep. I mean, it's kind of it's kind of a bummer now. But, yeah. I mean, the audiobook is still really good. But, yeah. Um, I don't know. Go read the book. Don't listen to the audiobook. But the audiobook's really good. Um, <laughs> you cracked me just, up. I just wish these guys could keep their shit together. <laughs> I wish people could be both talented and good people. But <laughs> that seems to be too much to ask for. <laughs> yes, support the author by buying a copy and also borrowing it and uh, re- or buying an ebook or whatever. Support the author in, in that capacity. Yeah. Um, and then the last, the, okay, so in speaking of mood readers, my mood this first quarter of 2024 seems to be the femme fatale Mm -hmm. and female serial killers. Mm -hmm. Um, so also check out the killer's wife. That was another good one with some crazy plot twists. Mm. So you got good recommendations right now. I know a lot of feminine rage, and it's been so fun. I um, I uh. I wonder if that's what <laughs> I should maybe get back into a little romance. <laughs> I was just thinking, I was like, maybe that's why her text messages the other day were so aggressive. <laughs> she, she she had some very aggressive. She Kristen doesn't get upset, and Kristen got upset, and you could I could feel that energy <laughs> through her text message. I was like, oh. This is serious. She's like mad. Yeah, I was yeah. like, "Frick, don't make Kristen <laughs> mad." <laughs> it's rare, but it might have something to do with the books I've been listening to. <laughs> you guys want us real quick before we wrap up this episode? You want a story of young Bobby Joe? Yes. Okay, so let me let me look this up really quick. Just one second. I want to get it right. Um, I gotta find it because I. What is the name of these books? That's not the right name. Just type in all the words you know about the books. <laughs> Google's got you, I bet. <laughs> okay, so do you guys remember the Junie B. Jones books? I love Junie B. Jones! <laughs> okay, so if I'm going to search. So this is Junie B. Jones. Um, it's a children's book series written by Barbara Park and illustrated by Dennis Bernkaus. And it was, it, it was a series that ran from 1992 to 2013. And the story centers on almost six-year-old Junie B. Jones and her adventures in kindergarten and first grade. My, I was reading these because this was actually, so I'm a 94 baby. So I was reading these like 1995 because bobby's a quick learner i was trying to think of when i started reading <laughs> and it was pretty young actually i didn't talk i didn't talk As until i was three Bobby's eyes worked she picked up a book <laughs> <laughs> not quite i was probably i was probably six i was probably around six or seven it's probably seven seven eight reading these books and um my parents and she's kind of mischievous like Junie B. Jones is mischievous sassy my parents made me stop re- they would no longer buy me these books and no longer allowed me to read these books because I was getting a little too much attitude and my mom was like started reading some of them and was like 
no more Ginny B. Jones, Bobby Joe. <laughs> so that's a real thing. I think you can take on the vibes and attitude of what's around you. So I think it is important to occasionally read something positive and happy. <laughs> inspiring and fun you know like just those vibes <laughs> so <laughs> that's that's a young bobby joe story <laughs> there's that's a good lot advice. of them that's good advice i'm gonna go back and read some more serial killer books i mean it's just like being inside <laughs> and diving into the internet and all this like like conspiracy world and then going and touching grass <laughs> like you need a book <laughs> you need a cleanser <laughs> so <laughs> Go breathe in some oh, trees. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Anyway. We, okay, so a quick aside. We need a series that is our touch grass books. Yeah. My touch grass books used to be like CJ Archer stuff. But now I'm like so I'm caught up on all of her stuff basically. <laughs> and so now I'm like, you know, that my fake fiance was kind of my attempt at that <laughs> same thing, which is it worked out so good because I'm so excited to jump into The Witcher and I'm. I'm at, let me see, I'm at like 15%, 22% after <laughs> only a few hours of reading. I, I'm really confused. Like I said, I'm, I'm really confused about this, but it's fine. It will it'll buff. I'm still reading, so I'm still interested <laughs> to figure out what's going on. So I think it's the right vibe to be in. But anyways, tell us down below uh, what you've read, what's inspired you, if you have a touch grass series, and if you made it to the end of the episode, let me look. Let me look for an emoji to put in the comments. Fried shrimp. There was no grass. I looked up grass. <laughs> I was like, is there like a sprig of grass? You do a leaf. <laughs> uh, let's do the big happy tree. Uh, I'll put it... Big happy tree. Yeah, I'll put a... I just text it to you, Kristen, <laughs> actually. Uh, for example. <laughs> oh, for example. I uh, will put an image in of the big happy tree I'm talking about, guys. <laughs> Look at you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, okay. Also, um, we have some links down below for our website and stuff. Be sure to check it out. Um, but yeah, tell us tell us your Touch Grass series because we, we need I need to add some of that to my list <laughs> anyways because i have some big series coming up which uh maybe i'll talk about soon but uh until then keep reading <laughs>